Hey guys, I'm Ron Carpenter and you're watching Ron Carpenter Television. I'm grateful to have you. Stick around for the next few minutes because I got an interesting topic. There are things that we can do right here on earth that Jesus said it moves heaven. Heaven responds to those activities. What are they? Let's take a journey and study them. Hang around. So God, when he makes man, he doesn't make maleness. He makes a kind. He made a species, if you would, <laughs> called man. He said, this man, this species called man, I'm going to put him in the earth to rule it. And he's going to be just like me. I'm making him out of myself. I'm going to form him a body out of the mud, but that's not who he really is. That's just mud. It's not until I breathe the breath of life in him that my life goes out of me and goes into that mud man. The word Adam means man of the mud or mud man, and it was just mud until God breathed in it. But when God breathed in it, it became something that came straight from God. So Adam bore God's image. Adam bore God's likeness. You could look at Adam and see God's reflection on the man named Adam. Adam had the same abilities as God. I'm going to push this thing a long way today. God had dominion in the, earth, in, in the heavens. Adam had dominion in the earth. God subdued and multiplied in the heavens. He told Adam to subdue and multiply the earth and fill it. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. And whatever he said, it happened. And the Bible says, whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. That's a bad Adam right there. <laughs> so Adam was in the earth operating just like his God. In other words, the earth was meant to respond to Adam's words, not his hands. You don't hear anything about sweat, toil, and labor till after he sinned. Because Adam was built to speak and the earth was built to respond to what he spoke. Whatever Adam called it, that's what it became. That's powerful. Now, can I go a little bit further? Are you ready for this? Luke 3.23. This is one of the most boring passages in the whole Bible. The Bible's full of genealogies. Why? Because bloodlines are very important to God. And so you get to these portions in the Bible, there's several of them where God just goes through these generation after generation after generation of genealogies. But this one is very important in Luke 3. He begins with Jesus and goes back. Jesus himself began his ministry about 30 years of age, being as, he, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, who was the son of Heli. Now let's go to verse 38. He runs that genealogy all the way down to verse 38, and he says, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam. What? Ho, ho, ho. I thought God only had one son. God had two sons. God's only ever had two sons. You're in one or you're in the other. If you're not saved, you're in the first Adam. The Bible says he was a man of the flesh. But the Bible says Jesus, the second or the last Adam, was a man after the spirit. And when I get born again, I leave my fleshly father, the first Adam, and I am born again in my second, in my, in my father, my second Adam. And everybody who is born again is born of Jesus, and they're a part of the second or the last Adam. God's only had two sons. You're in one or you're in the other. Let your neighbor say, which one are you in? Which one are you in? Come on, let's say, which one are you in? It's bad if they can't answer you. You want to be in that second one. The first one was a son after the flesh. The second one was his son after the spirit. See, all this stuff's in the Bible. Ain't it amazing? Amazing. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? You don't have one? Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. Genesis chapter 2, 
16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. It's all yours. Okay? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. In the day you eat of it, you shall die. Oh, there's so much. I got bombs going off inside me. That's called the law of divine portion. God always through the Bible saves a portion for himself and says, don't eat it, it's mine. This whole garden, eat whatever you want. Eat how much you want. But of these two trees, there's another one, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat those, they're mine. That's my portion. God had 12 tribes in Israel, but he said, don't touch the Levites. They don't work. They minister to me. They run the house. They run the worship. You can touch the other 11, but don't touch them. They are mine. God had the tabernacle. He had the outer court, the inner court. You could run all through it, but God had a curtain, and that was the holiest of holies. God said, don't touch it. He said, if you come past that curtain, you'll be thrust through with a dart. He said, that's mine. And then God gets to your money and he says, 90% of it's yours. He said, but there's 10% of it that's mine. Don't eat it. God always has a portion that he saved for himself. And he says, don't eat my portion. That is good preaching. Amen, Ron Carpenter. Amen. Scripture back up there, please, if you would. Amen. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat from the day that you eat of it. You shall surely die. Go to verse 20. So Adam gave names to the cattle, to the birds. I think that's so funny. Adam was the last thing created. So everything else was walking around six days wondering what it was. <laughs> that's hilarious. Can you see the tiger walking up to the lamb like, do we hang out or do I eat you or what, what goes on here? I don't... So Adam gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not a helper comparable to him. <laughs> Can you see God walking up the lamb? What do you think, Adam? He's like, you know, God, sheep just ain't doing nothing for me right now. I'm just going to be honest with you, God. He walked the giraffe up to him. Adam's saying, Lord, I ain't feeling it. Lord, I just ain't feeling it. There was, they looked around and there was none suitable for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God taken from man, he made into woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is bone of my bone. This is flesh on my flesh. She shall be called woe. <laughs> Imagine this. Come on, let's be real now. Be real. Don't get offended at me. Adam went to sleep and woke up and there stood a naked woman. <laughs> this is a good, good day for Adam right here. This is a good day. And what does he say? Whoa, man. Whoa. Whoa, she don't look like me. She's different than me. Whoa. Can you see him high-fiving God? <laughs> so, if I read to you a previous scripture, God creates the species. Let me get my other marker. God creates the species man. But then he looked down on man and said, he's like me. And there's one thing about that I don't like. He said, I don't like, it's not good for him to be what? Alone. Let's break it down. I'll give you a little insight on the marriage conference. It's not good for him to be. God needed nothing outside of himself to procreate. God had all regenerative and reproductive qualities within himself. God created everything and there was nothing there but him. He needs to join with no outside agent for procreation. 
He looked at Adam, and Adam was all one. He said, I don't like that about him. So God took Adam, who was, had everything that was needed for his own reproductive qualities embedded in himself, and this is what God did. He took the species, man, and then he made him male. Come on, somebody. And he made them female. So he took the kind and made it two genders. He took parts out of Adam. Woman means man with a womb. Adam means man of the mud. Woman means man with a womb. So he took qualities out of Adam that he is now deficient of. He doesn't have those qualities. She is not all of Adam. She is part of Adam. So she has qualities he's deficient in. Herein lies the partnership of marriage. The partnership of marriage is the most difficult part. The friendship of marriage we love. The partnership of marriage is where we fight. Because partnerships are not chosen out of likenesses. Good partnerships are chosen out of differences. And instead of understanding the partnership of our spouse, we war with our spouse over the place where they are different. There are things that me and Hope both love, and we are best friends out of those likenesses. But over 30 years, there are places where we are totally different, and we have become great partners because of those differences in our life. you got to understand, she has stuff he don't have, and he has stuff she don't have, but when you put them together, the two shall become one. to operate apart from heaven. It was meant to operate just like heaven. And God put something on earth that was just like him to govern the earth the way that he governs the heavens. No doubt everyone wants their prayers answered. In this series, Pastor Ron teaches us practical steps on how to approach God directly. In your house, you represent the government of heaven. In a fight, you represent the government of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven and you are an ambassador here. So you got to go into that argument saying, what would heaven say? You got to go into that problem saying, what would heaven do? I am representing heaven, I'm not representing Ron. This seven-message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. He said, this is me. She is me. This is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my flesh. So God took the kind and made two genders out of the kind. Okay, that is why sex is so powerful. Sex is so powerful, why? Because the thing that was previously all one, God separated it, and in sex is when it comes back together and you have that explosion. That's why it's one of the most powerful forces in the earth because it's what was one and then two joining back together again. Ethel, he is talking about sex. He is talking about sex. Ethel, I can't believe it in church. God went into the dirt to make Adam. And that was the last time he ever reached into the dirt. Eve didn't come from the dirt. Eve came from Adam. Everything else came out of Adam. It was already in him. The Bible in 1 Corinthians, there's so much. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 11, 7 through 9 says that man is the glory of God. That means the likeness and the reflection. In other words, I should look at our men and I should see a reflection of my God. I should be able to look at you and tell what God is like. Listen to what it says. It says, woman is the glory of man. So women are a testimony of what they're joined to. Men, can I tell you something sobering? If there's something broken in her, that means there's something broken in you because she came out of you. Now, Genesis 3, they were in the garden. Satan is a spirit too, so he took on the body of the serpent. 
He went and had a discussion with Eve. He didn't have a discussion with Adam. He had a discussion with Eve. He said, did not God say that if you would eat this fruit, you'd be like him? She said, listen. She said, God said of every tree in the garden we can eat, but of these trees we cannot eat. How did she have that information? Because she wasn't there when God had that conversation. How did she know that? It's because Adam taught her what God said. Men, it's not up to your wife to have the prayers with the children. It's not up to the wife to teach the Bible stories. Eve only had that information because Adam heard the voice of his God and turned around and taught it to his family. That was his role. She is having a conversation with the enemy based off what Adam taught her. So she took this so much. Oh, I'm trying to shut it down. She took the apple because he deceived her. Adam showed up and turned around and she gave him an apple and he just ate it. There wasn't no deception at all. So in your first father, Adam, men, you're prone to rebellion. In your first father, Eve, ladies, you are prone to deception. That only gets changed when you're born again. Okay? <laughs> so she was deceived. He just rebelled. Then they ate and both of them, their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. They weren't naked. They hadn't been wearing clothes, but the, they, were there, they were like God. God is, not, God is not wearing jeans and a t-shirt right now. The Bible says he's clothed in glory and in honor. So they wore the clothing of their father. And Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the they lost their father's covering. They went on living physically. They went on living mentally, but spiritually they were cut off. There was no connection to heaven. And the Bible says that God came walking in the garden and said, where are you? God would know where they were because they were connected spiritually. But now Adam has spiritually died and he's been separated from his God. Now... The earth has no ruler. Oh, I could mess you up. Romans chapter 8 says the earth was subjected to futility. Not willingly, but because of he who subjected it. The earth is rocking and reeling like a drunken man. It don't know what to do. Because nobody here has dominion. So it don't know how much to rain. Therefore, we have floods. The wind don't know how hard to blow. We have hurricanes. Oh. And then we call it an act of God. We blame it on God. God don't wipe, God don't wipe out subdivisions. That's not God. Adam was given dominion and he lost it. Their eyes were open and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. What is the only thing Jesus cursed? Jesus showed up thousands of years later and walking with the disciples stopped and saw a fig tree and cursed it. What are they doing with fig leaves? Trying to fix their sin problem. They're trying to fix it themselves. And Jesus said, I forever curse your attempt to fix your own sin problem. Salvation is not of man. Salvation is of God, lest any man should boast. Salvation is not man's victory. Salvation is God's victory. And the fig leaves represented them trying to cover their own sins. And the only covering for your sins is the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, love covers a multitude of sins. Somebody say amen. I know you're ready to go. Give me just another second. Give me just a a second. Tap your neighbor and say, this is good, neighbor. This is good. This is good. Okay? Keep reading right here. Then Adam, then Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Let me tell you something, boy. Adam's something. When God called him on the carpet and said, Adam, what, is you, what have you done? You know what he said? He said, this woman you gave me. He threw Eve under the bus so quick. God said, what have you? 
Eve ate first, but God didn't go to Eve. He went to Adam. He said, I hold you responsible. Adam, what's going on? Because the woman gave you the... In other words, because the thing I told you to feed, you made it turn around and feed you. Yeah. Eating from the tree, I command you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Next verse, 18. Cursed is the ground, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Verse 18. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat. The herb of the field, hallelujah. And the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of you you were taken, from dust you are until dust you shall return. I'm going to stop right there. Brandon, play something for me if you would. God didn't curse Adam. He cursed the ground. Now Adam is trapped in a world that no longer responds to him. He lost dominion, but he's still in it. How many people walk around and life is beating them to death? And the original mandate of God was for you to rule your world and have dominion, and that mandate has never changed. Why do you think Jesus is called the second Adam? Because if an Adam messed it up, it's going to take an Adam to fix it. If you want to know what Jesus really did for you, go study everything Adam lost. Because that's what Jesus bought you back. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he didn't say, now I can save you. He said, all authority has been given unto me. He said, I came, I left heaven, and I came into the earth, and I took on the form of a man. I put on a flesh suit. The Word became flesh, and I died, and I raised from the dead, and now I got the authority back. In my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall heal the sick. He said, what the first Adam lost, I came and got it back. It's about authority. It's about who will rule. Stand with me, if you would, all over this building. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell three people, say, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. This is good. <laughs> the conflict of the universe is over who will rule. You are not meant for life to have its foot on your neck. You are meant to have all things under your feet. People may not like me as a pastor, but I'm going to tell you the Word of God. I'm going to teach you the Word. I'm going to let you know who you are. <laughs> it's the dominion mandate. And Jesus came to give us back authority. And unless you know who you are, you can't approach that courtroom. That courtroom has rights, privileges, and protocol. And all Jesus, the righteous judge, has got to do is rule in your favor, and your prayer is answered. It's it. We're going to take this journey together. Let's give God a praise. Come on, somebody. Earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. It was meant to operate just like heaven. And God put something on earth that was just like him to govern the earth the way that he governs the heavens. No doubt everyone wants their prayers answered. In this series, Pastor Ron teaches us practical steps on how to approach God directly. In your house, you represent the government of heaven. In a fight, you represent the government of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven and you are an ambassador here. So you got to go into that argument saying, what would heaven say? You got to go into that problem saying, what would heaven do? I am representing heaven, I'm not representing Ron. This seven message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.
I hope that you're enjoying this. You know, this is a brand new topic. I've never spoken on a lot of these topics and the study of it, man, just really blew me away after I began to process it and get it settled in my own mind. I couldn't wait to turn around and tell each and every one of you about it. Let me just take a minute and thank all of our the people who are our covenant partners, the people who give, whether it's every once in a while, whether it's one time, whether it's consistently as a partner on a month, I need to say thank you. We haven't been showing you commercials. We haven't been running ads. We haven't been doing infomercials. Why? We are viewer and we are listener supported and that is you. I'm grateful. Since 1998, you have not only kept us on the air, but you've allowed us to grow from little local programming to glo global programming and I'm grateful. I want to invite more people into this family, this family of givers. If you are being blessed by a thing, would you consider turning around and blessing it back and making sure it's strong, making sure that the thing, the well that you draw from, that you turn around and replenish that well. Replenishment, reciprocity is key, that you reciprocate the blessing back to the thing, to the people who are blessing you. I would just ask you if you would consider, maybe you've never given before and you'd like to be a one-time giver. Maybe you're being touched or pulled on right now. Maybe this message spoke to you. Or maybe you'd like to say, you know what? I consistently am a watcher. I want to consistently be a giver. And maybe you could consistently give and start now. Maybe your heart's being touched. I just want you to obey God. We have this very special gift that we'll give you just to say thank you. It's not you buying anything. It's us being a giver and saying we value the fact that you sense any relationship with us. We really do. To those who've been giving, I ask you to continue your faithful support because we're growing, things are happening. We just got everything in and did our first working the bugs out of translating this simultaneously in, trans and in Chinese. So now it'll be English, if I can speak it right, and then it's translated into Spanish and also Chinese all at the same time. You help make that possible. I'm grateful. We're doing a lot of great things and you're helping us do it. I want you to check out my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, because on that I'm talking all the time and I would love to cultivate a deeper relationship with you. I think great things are on the way. I hope that you've enjoyed it today. We want to be an encouragement to you because we believe God's got great things for you. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.